So let's wrap up our discussion on the connective tissues by turning our attention to bone and blood connective tissues. So let's start with bone. Now, bone is a connective tissue that's rigid and hard due to the calcium minerals, uh, particularly calcium carbonate and calcium phosphates that are within the extracellular matrix here. So this is the first connective tissue that we've seen that's uh, embedded with minerals in its extracellular matrix. Uh, that's not the only thing in its extracellular matrix though. Bone also has an abundance of collagen fibers in it. So the collagen fibers give it uh, give it some flexibility. So it's not as flexible as say like elastic cartilage uh, or even fibrocartilage, but uh, the collagen fibers do still help to give it some flexibility. Uh, due to really the abundance of the minerals that are within it, the calcium minerals, bone is a tissue that is really best at resisting compression. Um, so that is, we can put heavy weights and heavy loads on top of bones, uh, and bone will not crumble. Uh, as long as it's healthy bone, it will not crumble under body weight. Uh, and it's really, really good at resisting those compressive forces. Bone is not very good in tension, so that is if you start pulling on bones, then that's when they are most likely to break, and uh, so bones are not really great at resisting tension, but they are they are excellent at resisting compression and things like that. So, so that's why they make an ideal uh, material for our skeleton and, uh, and supporting our body and body weight. So we see that bone is mostly uh, plays a role in both supporting the body. So it is our internal framework that not only holds up our, our body, but also provides an anchoring surface for skeletal muscles. But we also see it in a protective role too, as it forms bony cages and uh, things like that, that surround soft organs like the brain, the heart, the lungs. And so those are all encased within uh, bony structures and uh, helps to protect those structures in addition to support them. So if we take a look at bone under the microscope, specifically here we'll take a look at a, a material called compact bone. Now compact bone is this really dense bony tissue that forms the walls of the bones and the skeleton. So we're, we're seeing compact bone mostly on the outer surfaces of our bones. This is the bone or the type of bone that makes our, our bones and skeleton uh, smooth uh, but continuous on the outsides and so uh, it provides a good ideal anchoring surface for things like muscles, blood vessels, uh, and nerves and things like that. So compact bone is this really dense bony tissue and the way that it's arranged microscopically is we see that it's arranged in these units of concentric rings and so concentric just means that these rings are nested within one another. Um, what these actually are when we look at them under uh, the microscope uh, in, and we investigate them more a little bit in chapter six, is we see that these, these concentric rings are actually pillars nested within one another. So, um, and these pillars, uh, when we look at them under the microscope in this, in, this, <clears throat> in this viewpoint here, they simply look like ring-like structures here because we're only looking at a, a thin section of them. Anyway, these concentric rings here are called osteons. So the osteon is kind of the basic unit of compact bone. In the center of each of our osteons here, we have an unsurprisingly named structure called the central canal. And so the central canal contains blood vessels and nerves. And so these blood vessels are bringing uh, nourishment to the, the bone cells that are located in little cavities within these osteons here. So these little, um, these little cavity-like structures that you're seeing here with these kind of very thin, delicate little branch-like structures coming off of them. These are called lacuna, uh, and it's the same kind of structure that we see in cartilages where uh, it's a small cavity that is a place for the, uh, the cartilage cells to reside in. But in this case, because it's bone and not cartilage, uh, the cell type is called osteocytes, and so these are the, um, these are the the, the primary cell of bone tissue. Uh, and just like cartilages, those uh, osteocytes reside in little cavities in the bone called lacuna. Okay, so that is bone. We'll take a look at bone in much, much more detail when we get to chapter six. So we'll kind of keep 
our discussion of bone very superficial here for the time being, and we'll move on to blood. Now blood is probably the most unusual of the connective tissues because it does not connect in any physical way uh, parts of the body, but it, and it also does not give any type of mechanical support or protection. Uh, its roles of uh, connecting and supporting uh, the body's tissues are in other ways. It is classified as a connective tissue because it does arise from that embryonic con uh, connective tissue called mesenchyme. Uh, it has cells in it, it has an extracellular matrix, and it also contains fibers in it, and these fibers are not typically visible uh, in the extracellular matrix until clotting happens, and so the fibers uh, become apparent during blood clotting when we're trying to heal wounds and things like that. So it does connect to the body in another way though. It functions to transport things like respiratory gases, nutrients, and wastes uh, throughout the body so that um, the respiratory gases and nutrients can be delivered to the cells and tissues that need them. And it also serves as the, the vehicle for transporting wastes uh, to the urinary system, particularly to the kidneys, so that the kidneys can remove those wastes from the body. It doesn't provide mechanical protection that is physical protection, but blood does uh, have a number of cells that are involved in immune system function, so it does provide protective functions in that there are immune system cells within uh, the blood tissue. So if we look microscopically at blood, we see that the primary, the major cell type that we see is the erythrocyte. Now these are the red, uh, erythrocytes are, are red blood cells. Um, they're kind of, um, they're almost kind of donut shaped in that they're thicker around the edges and thinner in the middle. And this gives them a really good surface area for carrying oxygen. Um, so red blood cells, their primary job is to shuttle oxygen from the lungs uh, to all of our cells and tissues. Uh, they contain a uh, protein called hemoglobin that has iron in it, and that iron is what's responsible for binding that oxygen uh, and carrying it to all of our uh, cells and tissue, uh, all of our other cells and tissues within the body. Right? The less numerous of the cell types are the leukocytes, and here, uh, shown by the arrows here, are two examples of leukocytes here. Uh, this top leukocyte is called a lymphocyte, and the bottom one here is called a neutrophil. And all of the leukocytes function in protection uh, th uh, by the immune system, and so they, they search out microorganisms, viruses, uh, bacteria, fungi, uh, other things within the blood that shouldn't be there, and they destroy them. Uh, and so they protect our body by fulfilling immune function roles. Uh, these little pieces right here that you see are not actually cells, but they're cell fragments called platelets, and platelets are really important in uh, blood clotting, and so these are, uh, these are little cell fragments that form plugs in blood vessels uh, to facilitate that clotting process uh, in, in uh, stopping blood loss there. Uh, what we don't see here on this slide is the extracellular matrix, and the extracellular matrix is a fluid that's mostly water that's called plasma, and so it does have water in it. It's, uh, the, the vast majority of plasma is water, but it also contains nutrients like glucose and amino acids, a number of wastes uh, that are byproducts of metabolism, a uh, number of ions like sodium and potassium and calcium, uh, as well as proteins.